Hey, what is up, everybody? This is Ben. And this is Blake. And you are listening to episode seven of the Nothing New Podcast. We're the podcast that emphasizes how doing the small things can help you turn the corner with your health, your business, your life, and any other area that you feel you need it. Boom. All right, guys. There's the boom. So welcome to episode seven. Last week, we had a really great interview with one of uh, Blake's childhood friends that he's known forever. And this guy had a pretty incredible story. Uh, I know it, it kind of stuck with me after listening to it a few times and really was something that uh, was quite impactful. And I know you kind of felt the same way. Oh, yeah, for sure. I think he, uh, you know, I think he was shocked that, for one, he was wanted to, you know, to kind of tell a story. Uh, when I first, you know, asked him to do it, he was like, really? You know, is it that big of a deal? I was like, dude, I think there's many people that can relate to something like this. So, yeah, and, and kind of one of the cool things that we wanted to do on this podcast was to be able to emphasize like the everyday person. Now, obviously, um, and I say everyday person, not to not to make every, anyone seem little or anything like that, but to say that we all have these stories that are unique to us, and from each of those stories, we can take something and learn um, something pretty pretty important. I think for that one, I mean, to be able to see. Blake's his story that you know everything that he came up with and fought against and challenged himself with to getting rid of his excuses and, and coming up with actions that like it was a pretty incredible thing and and I'll tell you this too what's you know I I still learned something from the interview I mean you know he kind of mentions some of the help that I gave him going through his journey and honestly whenever he was telling me this like that's pretty cool because I didn't even realize that I was really you know helping him get to that point. So I thought it was very interesting and I was even learning as I was doing this thing, doing the interview. And that's a cool thing and it's it's something for everybody I think to realize is that any person that you're talking to, um, you have the ability to impact, to help, to change, you know, even one small detail in their lives to make it better. So just to really kind of focus on how you come across and how you're perceived other people, um, it's a, kind of an eye opener because you could have very simply just have been like, eh, well, here's here's a bench press, go do that, that should help, and not really think twice. But really, you became a fundamental aspect to his story, which is great. So Ben, you know, right off the bat, getting mm-hmm. to his, you know, whenever he was talking about growing up through high school and all that, what, uh, was there anything that immediately hit you whenever you heard him talking about this? I think when he talked about his childhood story, I think that was, that was huge because he, you know, he said that, uh, he was always the bigger kid. And it kind of made me think back and it's like, you know what? I was, I always looked at myself as with the group of friends that I had, I always felt like I was the bigger one. I would go through these growth spurts. I'd get tall. I would get a little bit chunky. I'd get tall, a little bit chunky and would go through that. And so there'd be those times where, uh, it was a little bit, you know, I had those insecurities, but then I'd even out and then I'd go right back to it. So I always kind of felt a little awkward. So when he said that, I was like, holy crap, there's, there's that, there's the way that I can kind of tie into the story. And from that point, I felt like I was pretty much hooked. Yeah, and and I think he did a really good job. You know, I thought it was a surprising when he when he mentions about you know having a kid kind of make fun of him. They would all fall down whenever he you know hit the ground. I thought that was a uh, you know he he kind of said at the time it didn't really bother him, but yet he still remembers it to this day. So I think <laughs> having those moments, you know, and we all have those moments. I mean, I can look back on my life and be like when people kind of laughed at me and made fun of me, like. I still remember those times, and Mm -hmm. I think it it was great to hear him say something like that. No, I thought that was pretty incredible, and yeah, it's one of those things, and probably, I don't want to speak for him, but to think that as he was saying that, and he's like, oh, I didn't really bother me at the time, as he was probably saying those words, kind of realized the importance of, hey, it's followed me to this point, and it was was one of those things that helped shape me to this point now, Um, so it definitely was something that was an important part of his life. And what I... and. You know, what I love most about it is he, it was a bad situation, but he was able to use that as motivation, right? He could have easily right. accepted this and said, you know what, I'm always going to be that big guy and I'm cool with it. But he decided to, you know, get motivated and use that as, you know, more fuel for the fire, so to say. Mm-hmm. And and you look around and you see however many people throughout this, this life and this world that take those things and they're like, yeah, I'm going to be that person. Yes, I'm going to do this. Oh, well, I'm the big guy. That's, I'm, or you know, you hear like funny fat people. That's always one thing. It's like, oh, you know, uh, Jonah Hill, he was a lot funnier when he was fat, like little things. And I don't know how we got on that route, but it's, it's, Blake was obviously able to take a situation, 
realized, okay, it's not who I want to be, and he made a change, and he could have easily just been like, well, this is me. I might not be the happiest, but this is who I am. And, you know, and then I thought it was interesting whenever I asked him about making that change. You know, it was like all of a sudden it was just almost cold turkey. You you know, he goes to bed one night. He's like, you know what? I'm done being like this. Next day he woke up and he just started he started, period. He started moving. It was that simple. He changed his food a little bit, and he just started moving, making it super simple. Mm-hmm. And, and simplicity is its one of those things that uh, we make really complex, obviously. But its you look at it, and how many people or how many of you guys – out there, you start a diet, you start, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to lose this many pounds in this amount of time. And all of a sudden you have this complex plan. That's almost like it was never going to succeed to begin with. Right. Right. And it was always going to be a failure, but then you have this built in excuse that says, Oh, well, you, what I was, it was too hard to follow through with. And he kind of said, screw that and made it as basic as possible. As basic as possible. And, and again, yeah, it was just so, such a simple thing. He literally would wake up, say, I have to move today. Mm-hmm. I have to eat something better than I'm used to eating. I can't have my cookie. You know, mm-hmm. he loves those sweets, like you mentioned. Yeah. And all of a sudden, he started stepping on that scale, and he started seeing a difference. Mm-hmm. And I think, too, it kind of boils back down to, I know, like, when um, when we've gone and done talks and you know from at Avenue, and so it's been a big fundamental question that we always ask is, like, what's the better choice? And it's, you know, it's one of those things that he took it as he, he would go in a situation, like I have to do something better. And that followed him around every single day. And I think that's, that's important. It's basic, but it was so, it, he could have said no, he could have done something so much different. And, and again, he made it so simple that if he did have a bad day, guess what he was doing either before he knew he was going to have that bad day, you know, he's going to have that cookie. Mm-hmm. He's working out before he has it so that he could somehow, it was almost like a justification of like, you know what? At least I did do my work. I moved a little bit. Mm-hmm. Now I can go in and have that lovely cookie. I need. Yeah. Right? Which, you know, and he even said something that, cause the, that nutrition background, psychological aspect, I would come back and like smash that and just be like, you can't do that. You can't outwork something. But he, he, he said something along the lines of like mentally, it helped him kind of navigate this thing and right. realizing that why would I just sit there and crush this dude's idea when ultimately it's helped him so much. And uh, that, when he said that, all of a sudden I relaxed as a, as a, like that health practitioner or whatever you want to say. And uh, it made it to where it was this term of endearment. It was and, good. And I think what that does is it helps with, you know what, that's what motivated him, mm-hmm. right? Is he would exercise so that he could have a little bitty slice, you know, of the cake or of the cookie. Right. So it's everybody's different when it comes to what, uh, motivation and what, a mo- and what can motivate you to do whatever you need to do. So I thought that was interesting. And like I you said, too. I knew like whenever you'd hear something like that, you would be like, oh gosh, he's about to say yeah. it. Yeah. Because I, I can't stand it at the gym when people are like, oh, I, I worked out to outwork my cookie or pizza. It's like, dude, you can enjoy life. And I think he's taken that and he's kind of run with it a little bit and, and obviously down a path of, of in a positive manner because he's lost all this weight. He feels better and he's happier. So kudos to him on that aspect when most people, they can't do that. And then, you know, then going back to uh, after that, he talks about the barriers. I was like, what barriers did your face? You know, I said mm-hmm. after three weeks, he's like, dude. Yeah. It was after the first day. I <laughs> yeah. wanted to run, you know, I wanted to run a mile and I can only run 500 yards. And mm-hmm. I was like, I mean, that kind of hit me back in the face like instantly. I was like, geez, you don't think of it like that. Right. And, and I, I kind of, when he said that, uh, he ran for five minutes. And I look back at however many times, I, I've tried to be a runner in the past. And quite frankly, I hate it, still hate it, can't do it. But there's always those times I was like, you know what, I'm going to go and try and run a mile. I would come out my driveway, turn down the street. I wouldn't even get down to the end of the street. I'd leave the cul-de-sac and turn right back around. But I never, ever tried it again. But he said it as, all right, I got five minutes. I got 500 yards. Well, let me try six minutes tomorrow. And I would never would have done that. It's, it's the thing, you know. It's just getting 1% better, trying to get 1% better every day. Like, again, he talks about the snowball effect, which we will talk about here Mm -hmm. in a little bit. But it was just, you know, every day a little bit better than than yesterday. And I thought, again, he made it simple. It's really simple. Anybody can do it. And I think that's kind of what he was telling all of us as a listener. And you you just said that everybody can do it. Anybody can do it. I think sometimes that we... We look to certain people, um, whoever it may be, professional athletes, and you know, you see these models, whoever it is, and you look at them and say, "Oh, they do that because that's their job." 
And you know what? Maybe Blake one day is a model. Who knows? But I'm just saying, like, he's he's the average Joe. He's that one of us you see walking the streets. Um, and he made the change. Like, he had no excuses. Well, he had. He could have had excuses, but he took those away. So it's not that he's somebody that's way up there on this pedestal. He's one of us. And it's realistic, and he did it, and he got rid of the barriers. That's awesome. And, and I thought that he did a, uh, you know, when we asked about what was motivating him through this time, and he says, you know, my wife and if we plan to have kids, mm-hmm. you know, I want to be able to play with them when I, you know, as they grow. And I just think that was, I think that probably hit you a lot. It hits anybody with that has kids, like understanding, like, we would love to go outside and play with them. And I can tell you, whenever he was at that 287, I mean, you know, it definitely makes things a lot harder. Oh, heck yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, having my daughter now and a son on the way, it's one of those things you look at and say, oh, I want to be able to be the dad that does blank. Like Brent, at, <laughs> he talks about how he wants to beat his kids until they're oh, 18. Yeah. <laughs> like it's got, it's this whole thing you look at and, you know, you got to find that motivation. But I'm going to throw a counter argument, okay? However many people out there that are listening now don't have kids or their kids are past the point where, you know, maybe they're in their 50s or 60s and they're like, oh, my kids are grown. There's no way I'm going to keep up with them. That removes this whole idea of a motivation factor to them. What, what do we say to them? I, I say you have to figure out what motivates you. And for instance, for me, I have no kids, right? But I can tell you what motivates me to keep me into the gym every day, right? I think it's, for instance, for me, I know I'm, uh, I'm actually about to be heading to Sweden. I know I'm going to the beach. Okay, guess what? That motivates me to stay in the gym, right? <laughs> yeah. I don't want to be the one taking off my shirt and not you know, looking halfway decent. So I think it, and that's just what motivates me. Everybody is going to be different. Right. You have to figure out what is your motivation. Ben, I'm sure your motivation is something different as well. Yeah, I don't like the beach. Um, no, I, I, I mean, I will take that and say my motivation, obviously, my kids. I would love to have that that activity level and, and be able to stay consistently high on there. But, um, you know, it's I'm going to make a joke about this, but I'm somewhat serious, is just turned 29, all of a sudden I'm having these random aches and pains and feelings oh, I have never goodness, had that's how you know. in my entire life. And so <laughs> it's a uh, you know, joke. I'm getting older, but at the same time, it's really like I have – turf toe. I've never had anything like this in my life. And it's, it, it bugs the absolute hell out of me. So it's, I want to, my motivation is I just want to feel good and have enough energy to get through a day and obviously, you know, have those kids. So I think, like you said, whether it's something as, I don't want to say it's a selfish thing. I don't I think if everybody wants to look good, so that definitely is a, a motivating factor, but also feeling good. Oh yeah. Fine. Sure. Yeah. Fine. Well, I can thing. tell you right now at 27 is when it hit me. So you're doing well. Man. <laughs> I'm ahead of the curve, great. ahead of the curve. Hey, I do want to go back and mention one thing about the bears when we were just, when yeah. I, something else that he mentioned that, um, that I just remembered and I want to make sure that everybody, you know, gets this and understands this, but again, going back to how he made things simple for him. Mm-hmm. I love the fact of when I asked him about a gym membership and he's like, no, oh, I didn't do yeah. a gym membership. Yeah. He's like, I literally, I, I brought, I got the TRX suspension trainer. Um, and now he's grown his little garage into a like small gym, but it's been over time. Right. But he made it again, simple for him. You know, it's at his house. He doesn't have to travel anywhere. He can't blame it on the weather. Oh, he man. can't blame it. You know, he doesn't have time to drive down there. He's got it at his place. He has, he's virtually made it like no excuse for him. Yeah, I mean, how many of you guys out there listening right now, if it's somewhat cold, you don't go to the gym because you'd have to get in your car, turn it on, turn the heater on, all these things. Or if it's too hot, you wouldn't want to sweat on your way to the gym. It doesn't make sense. But um, it definitely is a barrier. And I, he just said, screw that. I'm getting rid of all of those excuses. That way I can't say no. I can't um, have any reason not to do something. And then what about the whole travel talk? Of like oh, when, yeah. of when we you know how would he plan his schedule around the traveling mm-hmm. and and I kind of mentioned this in the podcast because we deal with this on a daily basis of right. oh man I've got this trip so I wasn't able to to work out you know mm-hmm. this day and that day and I always want to be like well you knew that trip was coming up so what could you have planned either ahead or after um, you know before your trip. Exactly. And he didn't use it as an excuse. Or if he did, he would bring that suspension trainer with him, which is a great tool to you know travel with. But I brought my kettlebell. We went to the lake this past weekend. I brought my kettlebell. It stayed in my truck the entire time, but I had it. I don't and know if had that the counts. Thought. I don't you know if that the counts. Thought. It was there. It you was know what? There. That's a step forward, though, Ben. Next time, 
you actually pick it up and use it. Maybe. Exactly. I, I, baby steps. One uh, percent better. At least I brought it this time. Normally I would not. But no, I, I think it's any way that you can remove any type of barrier, any type of reason that you don't do something, whether it's maybe you don't have the money to build a gym or get any equipment. You can still do body weight exercises. You yep. can still do anything like that. You can go for a walk. And I think he took that to heart and he believed in that every single day. And that's something I think we all need to do. And, you know, I just, I just, I really loved how, how simple he made things, but think about this, how, how, how truly simple this is. He ate better. He moved every day. Yeah. It doesn't we can, good. anybody can do it. Anybody can do that. Yeah. And I think that was really his, his message that he was trying to get out there is like, look, at the time I was 287, this was a super show where I couldn't run but 500 yards. Mm-hmm. And now I know that guy is working out every day. He's always sending me messages like, hey, here's my new workout of the day. What do you think? What would you change? And the guy is actually like, he, I think he's now addicted to it. <laughs> but, you know, whenever he first started, it was, it was tough. It was a very it was a very big struggle. And I think you mentioned it. It's like the, the simple formula of, of eating better and moving every day. I think uh, it kind of goes back to the, that whole idea of celebrating the small wins. Because how many of you guys out there look at it and say, okay, I want to lose 20 pounds, 10 pounds. And really, like, you, get, you might have those big numbers. Maybe it's 5 pounds and 10 pounds, those increments. But what about one? What about two? What about three? Or what if it's as basic as I went on a 10 minute walk today and I didn't know if I was going to have the time or I went to this restaurant and instead of getting pizza or whatever it is, I might be blasphemy to some of you out there, but you got a, a better option, a salad with grilled chip, whatever it may be. That's still a good thing. What about, okay. What about this? And people forget this as well. What about just maintaining? Mm, yeah. Like the whole maintaining side of things, because just think if he would not have started exercising, then what would he be like now? Or what would any of us listener, if we did not do our exercise, we did not, you know, eat better choice food. What would we be like in five years? Think of that. That's true. And then he, yeah, he had made that, that announcement, I guess, of, um, the goal of maintenance was just as key as his goal of progress. So obviously we're all going to hit plateaus. We're going to do that. If you're trying to lose weight, feel better, whatever it is, you're going to hit those struggle points. And he really looked at that as okay. Just being able to stay at that point is still good versus if I had, you know, like, oh, screw it. And then given up. And I th- like that was one of the things uh, that I had was like my biggest takeaway when he said that. No, I agree. Um, yeah, I totally agree with that. Yeah, and it, it's it's a pretty hard thing to do. So I want you guys to realize you don't always, like, it doesn't have to be achievements a hundred times a day. It can be the same thing as, all right, maybe this is that point where I recognize that I'm sticking with something. I have the discipline, and that's, you know, that maintenance, whatever you call it, it's still just as important. And, and I can tell you this. I, you know, I deal with clients every single day, and every once in a while, you know, you'll have a client say, you know, Blake, I just feel like I'm not, I'm not losing the weight I wanted to. They're like, I'm basically staying the same. I'm like, well, think about this. You've gotten a heck of a lot stronger. Mm -hmm. And then I'll show them, here's why, you know, look what you're lifting right now. But then I'll also say like, do you remember like that one time I had you do a, just for instance, a lateral lunge Mm -hmm. and you said it hurt really, really bad. Now we do it every single day. So they're at least moving better. Again, that's moving better outside with the kids, moving better outside, you know, riding a bike, right? No pain. That's a great thing. Mm-hmm. And that's, yeah, definitely. It's a, that's a small win. And I think it's anyway, like he made it seem like those small wins, they definitely added up for him and it kept him at that same plan, that same guide. And I think that's something that we can all do every day and say, Hey, I did this and I could have done something much worse, but here I am. And I, I think that that's important. What did you, uh, what did you think about his action steps? Uh, you know what? I try to come back and look at myself because as he's saying all these things, I really took a lot of it um, and twisted it internally to me to see how I related. And so uh, his big thing about making like planning ahead, whether you're going out of town like you had mentioned earlier, um, whatever it is, or he knew that he only had 15 minutes, whatever it was, he would make the most of that. And I really look back at how often I do that. And it's probably not, I'm, I'm pretty terrible at time management. So like that's never been a good thing, but the ability to plan ahead, uh, is, it's imperative to any goal you have. It's, you know, yeah, whenever he talked about time and that, uh, I think that was probably the biggest action step, honestly, that I would say that I most agreed with was 
you know what? You have to sometimes create that time. Find that time. It's true. You know, and we all we all say we don't have time to do this, do that. Okay, you know, he could easily use that excuse. We could all easily use that excuse as we don't have time. But you know what? If I've only got 10 minutes, what can I do? I can grab a jump rope, a med ball, you know, whatever it is, and do something because doing something is better than nothing. Exactly, and that's why you see... All these like seven minute workouts popping up, eight minute abs, all this cool stuff. Or I say cool, all this stuff that's popped up, and you know you laugh at it, but it's like, all right, is it still better than what I might have done? Or you know maybe that it's ten minutes of mobility work because I'm gonna go sit on a plane like you're going yeah. to Sweden. Like that's yeah. a big deal. Yeah, and and you know for him, so I know that he goes out of town a lot, and what I mean by that is he goes to uh, his family has a beach cabin, so they're always going to the beach a lot on the weekends. And I knew I wanted to ask him about that through this interview because I want to know what he does. Does he plan ahead? Does he work out there? And again, you know, if he knows he's going to the beach, he's going to get that workout in on Friday before they leave. I know that. And then whenever Sunday, when they come home, he's either going to, before they unpack workout or they're going to unpack and then he's going to go and do his, do his work. Yeah. And, and the ability for him to plan ahead and manage his time uh, helps him and anybody else that's going to follow that idea to eradicate any excuse you have. And ultimately, think about throughout your day how many times you've come up with an excuse of why you should not do something, what, whatever it is, why you should not eat well or why you should not go to bed an extra 10 minutes earlier, why you shouldn't go move. If you plan ahead, it's you know life's going <clears> to <throat> screw something up in your plans. But guess what? You've at least done something that might give you 10 minutes instead of 15, 15 instead of 20, whatever it is. And it's still better. So plan, be realistic. And then it helps take away that excuse. Something else I really liked about his action, his action steps was the, uh, the whenever he started talking about the snowball effect. Oh yeah. And yeah. you know, and I loved how he said, you know what? I just overall became a happier person, you know, in my life. It wasn't just about the exercise it was so much more than that. You know, he got more involved with church. And again, you know, we're going to interview this guy again because he can go so many different routes with this whole interview. Right. Um, but we kept it, you know, short and sweet. But I just loved how he said, not only did I feel better, you know, with my weight loss, but I was just a happier, healthier person, period. And I think off of that point, it's how many of us have waited for the perfect time to do something because you think at that point is when it's going to be great for you. When obviously he made that, that one step, because you think about if you work out, no matter how long it is, you feel better. You show up differently to other people. They see this and it just becomes like he said, that snowball effect. And all of a sudden your life is drastically different based off of one small little thing you did. And it's, you know, the ripple in the pond with, you know, with the pebble, so to speak, or the, it just, it, it means so much more and says, For you guys out there, and I'm talking to myself probably on this one, is like when you go and you say, all right, I'm going to wait till Monday. If it's Saturday, why the heck not start something on Saturday or do something and just make that less about how you'll be, the perfect time will be there for you because it never will be. And now we're speaking of procrastination, which is a huge topic (laughs) in itself. That's a whole other episode. (laughs) But definitely, I think that snowball effect is realizing that this one thing you do has such a greater impact down the road than you realize and the possibilities truly are limitless yep and i'll say just to kind of end off i mean ben you might have something else to say but i think just to our listeners is you know what now's the time to make a change if you feel like you need to make the change stick with it Mm -hmm. and just don't give up find out what motivates you find that and use it as a tool for yourself yeah and and to build off that because like i get motivated off I can be motivated all day. My problem is the discipline to stick with it daily. And so for him to do that and to set very realistic, tangible goals that he was able to achieve, uh, I think that kind of comes without saying is like, for me, that's the most important takeaway I had. And, and that comes down to also knowing yourself, knowing how you operate. Exactly. He knew how he operated. This is why this this story worked for him. Right. This might not work for everyone, right? So you have to know yourself and then ju- judge off that. And then don't let anybody tell you you're doing it wrong if you know yourself. Because I can have someone tell me, oh, that's not how to do it. But I know which parameters work best for me, just like he did. If I would have come in and said, hey, no, you're uh, five minutes, that's stupid. You should stick with a mile. And then he goes, no, it's not going to work for me. And then I deter him from his goals. Like, don't let anybody else kill what you're trying to do. Well said. Don't let him piss on your parade. <laughs> All right. So... 
we could have talked a lot about this a lot because I think his story was very impactful. And, I want, and we, the reason we did that is because we want you guys to realize that there's people out there every day that are improving their lives, and you can be one of those people. I mean, simple as that. So uh, it was a great interview. We were really thankful. So, Blake, thank you for coming on. We do appreciate that big time. Yeah, thank you, Blake. Um, and so that is going to be the end of today, episode seven. So uh, if you guys loved it, would love for you guys to share it. Let us know what you guys think. Um, five star review on iTunes would be great. The more reviews we get, the more people get to hear the podcast, and it helps us out tremendously. So uh, yeah, go hit us up there and, and let us know what you think. Hashtag two dragons. Hashtag two dragons. And we will see you guys next week. Thank you. Thank you. How long was that? That was.